So the topic um, of my talk is growth hormone in cardiovascular disease, in particular in heart failure, the pros and cons and the evidence. And growth hormone is really an interesting um, compound, as you've probably heard already in the last uh, two days. Um, it's very controversial, and most of you probably know that growth hormone is more regulated than all narcotics together. So <clears throat> it's an interesting compound, and that's why we as cardiologists, of course, jumped on it uh, a while ago. And uh, it's very controversial, so I try to find a picture to depict the, the opposites, the, the, the different ideas, what growth hormone uh, might mean for different people. Um, is a, do we have a pointer, by the way? Is that working? It's not get working. It to work earlier. Okay. Okay. Anyhow, you get the picture, I guess. <clears throat> so um, that's how growth hormone looks, um, and it is a, a hormone which is produced by the uh, anterior pituitary, as you know. Um, it's an anabolic steroid hormone. It's released from the anterior pituitary under hypothalamic control. It's secreted in a pulsatile manner, and it regulates somatic growth. Uh, especially in children, but of course there is a major role of growth hormone in adults too, and I come back to this. <clears throat> so uh, if we talk about growth hormone, uh, this depicts uh, the different organ systems and different tissues where growth hormone plays a role. It stimulates the secretion of somatomedins from the liver, which is the family of the insulin growth factor hormones. It stimulates skeletal growth in children, as you know. It stimulates protein synthesis in muscle. It releases fatty acids from adipose tissue, which all compromise the anabolic effects of growth hormone. And it inhibits the uptake of glucose by muscle uh, while stimulating the uptake of amino acids. The amino acids are usually used to build proteins in muscle, meaning to build muscle uh, mass. And that secretion, as I mentioned earlier, is a short concentrated secretion, a pulsatile, as we call it, uh, and sporadic secretion, not a continuous secretion. <clears throat> this is how growth hormone looks. And there's interesting data and there's growing evidence that growth hormone might play a major role also in, in uh, the, the embryonic states and the development in the heart of the heart, but also later on in the development of cardiac hypertrophy, of myocyte hypertrophy, uh, and potential anti-apoptosis in the heart. So um, that, of course, led us, among many others, to the idea whether we should use or try to use growth hormone in heart failure. <clears throat> um, of course, I don't expect that you read all that, but uh, this gives you an idea um, what growth hormone does potentially, uh, on the right side here of the screen in red, there's all the potential actions and effects on growth hormone. Uh, down there in right on the left are the, the inhibitors, inhibitors of growth hormone. For example, cortisol, corticosteroids can uh, reduce uh, the secretion of growth hormones. Lack of sleep uh, can do so. REM sleep can do so. Uh, growth hormone itself is a, um, has a negative feedback, as you know. So there's multiple actions and effects of growth hormones on all organ systems, as we know it today. And growth hormone obviously activates or can potentially activate every single cell in our body. So if you think about the evolution of man and how we grow with growth hormone, um, that's how we end up, uh, unfortunately, sometimes. And I think that's why most of us are here, because we want to avoid looking like that guy on the right, um, even though some of us do, unfortunately. <clears throat> but I think we all work on that to avoid that. That is the, the shape of things to come. And the question is, of course, does this have anything to do with growth hormone or with a reduction of growth hormone as we age? And there is a clear reduction. As you can see here, this is, you can get this from the web or from different publications. There's tons of papers uh, out there which demonstrate that early in adulthood, basically, growth hormone goes down, uh, uh, and, and here's the amount of secreted and, and micrograms um, with increasing age of interest. Um, this decline starts very, very early. 
as you can see here, but uh, at the age of 40, 50, there's almost a plateau. And of course, we, not all of us look like Brigitte Bardot, but uh, with age, and I don't want to be sexistic or uh, in any, any, time, any way discriminative, but of course, the age changes our features, as you can see. And uh, the interesting thing is I just heard from colleagues in, in France that um, uh, if, if you give growth hormone, of course, you can increase the levels in the blood and in the body, and uh, I heard Brigitte Bardot did that at the age of 76, and uh, she turned out quite differently um, recently. And I, I think she overdid it a little bit and, and used too much. You can see the, the line, the blue line goes up, and I saw it just a few days ago. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, a, it's an interesting transformation. But this comes to the point of a, of a recent press release uh, on growth hormones. Can you guys click on the video, please? This is uh, two years ago. Just click on it. When Sylvester Stallone was detained at the Sydney airport, it seemed no big deal. Oh, what was in your luggage at Sydney airport? <laughs> oh, a giant cheetah. But customs agents found human growth hormone in his luggage. Mr. Stallone was. Uh, Allowed to proceed with his party, and our investigations are continuing. HGH is a performance enhancer, and it's banned like steroids. But it's increasingly popular among aging baby boomers. The stuff works. Okay, so uh, just to give you an idea how controversially this is discussed. So coming back to the, to the scientific part, what do we think about growth hormone, and in particular the axis, the growth hormone insulin growth factor axis. A growth hormone directly binds to transmem uh, transmembrane receptors in all types of cells all over the body, basically, and it indirectly stimulates the production of insulin growth factor, IGF, in particular IGF-1, but also other insulin growth factors and other somatomedins. This occurs in the, in the liver as well as in the peripheral tissue. And uh, the combination, that uh, indirect stimulation of growth hormone and IGF, which we measure usually in the blood, makes up the IGF axis, which is depicted here, under control of the hypothalamus and with its effects on the peripheral tissues. I don't want to go into detail in that. So what does it do on the heart? So if growth hormone is expressed, basically it stimulates myocytes, and uh, the expression of growth hormone in myocytes uh, can lead to left ventricular hypertrophy as a result or of, sorry, of myocyte hypertrophy as a result of uh, different stress mechanisms such as mechanical stress or other injuries. So this is an autocrine or paracrine action of growth hormone which leads to cellular hypertrophy, cardiomyocyte hypertrophy. It delays myocyte apoptosis which is a predetermined cell death. It doesn't inhibit it completely, but can delay that. It increases intracellular calcium, especially the release of calcium from the sarcoplasmatic reticulum, and it increases the myofilament calcium sensitivity. And if you think back to pathophysiology, what that means, it means basically not only myocardial hypertrophy or myocyte hypertrophy, but also increased um, cardiac contractility. And that's how it looks experimentally. For example, here you can see uh, myocytes which are increased in size. And then uh, on the left upper corner, you see the heart with left ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, this is from an experimental model using growth hormone. So is this something good or is this something bad? The verdict is still not out because sometimes we try to avoid hypertrophy in pathologic stages such as uh, aortic stenosis or uh, um, uh, hypertensive heart disease. But in other conditions, of course, we try to induce hypertrophy if we have scar tissue and remodeling processes as a result of uh, coronary artery disease, for example. So uh, what are the mediated effects of insulin growth factor in, on, the, on the vascular side as well as on the uh, 
myocardium, it stimulates nitric oxide uh, production, which leads, of course, to improved coronary blood flow. It participates in the angiogenesis and also in the repair following ischemic events, meaning basically the compensatory hypertrophy of an injured heart in the remote tissue. Um, and, of course, there's, as you well know, physical and functional capacity effects in the, in the periphery. It maintains strength, strength, maintains, increases muscle mass, and maintains body composition, at least from clinical and preclinical studies. 